Hi, it's Edward, back with another video. Please take a moment to click the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing to the channel. Please also share this video via social media and with your friends via email. Thank you for your support. Today, I read several financial news articles. I've included links to the articles in the description below. I encourage you to read the articles to support the authors and news sources. As a private American citizen, I'd like to report and share my transformative thoughts through commentary regarding small sections of these articles that are of public interest. Are we experiencing the greatest bubble of human history due to artificially low interest rates and liquidity in the economy? Well, Mark Spitzenagel of Universa Investments thinks we are. I read an article today on Yahoo Finance put out by MoneyWise and written by Bethan Moorcraft titled, There's No Real Good End. Wall Street Bear says the U.S. is in the greatest credit bubble of human history and it's going to pop. How to prepare your portfolio for a huge crash. According to the author, one of Wall Street's biggest bears has delivered a scathing review of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy, accusing central bankers of creating the greatest credit bubble in human history. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's stop right here for a moment. If the author is calling Mark one of Wall Street's biggest bears, that should give us reason for pause. Whenever I read articles like this, I always wonder if there are other motives for sharing this type of information. Mark Spitzenagel's Universa Investments is an investment management firm that specializes in risk mitigation. So here's a question for you. Do articles like this that promote a bearish sentiment result in potentially more clients interested in risk mitigation? I'm not implying anything. I'm just asking all of you this question. Okay, getting back to the article, Mark Spitzenagel, Chief Investment Officer of Universa Investments, believes the Fed has created a tinderbox time bomb that will explode into a mega inferno in the shape of a major market crash in the next few years. So, in the next few years, if you look up the word few in the dictionary, the definition is a small number of. So, does this mean two years, three years, four years? The fact is, no one has a crystal ball. Will we experience another 2008 or something worse like 1929? Well, no one knows for sure. I, for one, am suspect of anyone who makes predictions with a certain level of confidence. What's interesting in this article is that there is a section where the author says the Fed is in a position where it cannot let this credit bubble burst because if it does, it will destroy the entire forest. If that's the case, why are we even worrying about a potential bubble? If the Fed cannot let the bubble burst, they may just go back to their playbook. They may just add massive amounts of credit to accounts of federal member banks and lower the Fed funds rate significantly. So there you go, bubble popping potentially averted. Now that's assuming the Fed can stay in control. If they lose control, who knows what could potentially happen. I'm not going to even try to speculate because I'd likely be wrong. What do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. Well, apparently Mark Spitzenagel isn't the only one gloomy about the economy. I read an article today on Yahoo Finance put out by the Associated Press and written by Christopher Rugeber titled, Why Americans Feel Gloomy About the Economy Despite Falling Inflation and Low Unemployment. The author of this article references a poll last month conducted by the Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research, which revealed that three quarters of respondents described the economy as poor. The author indicates there is one point of disconnect, which is the lingering financial and psychological effects of the worst bout of inflation in four decades. The author goes on to indicate inflation may be slowing, but many goods and services are still far pricier than they were just three years ago. Well, I tend to agree with this. When I visited the Bureau of Labor Statistics and reviewed the CPI data this month, the two things that all Americans need to survive, housing and food, have continued to increase month after month after month. While it was nice to see energy decline, that may not provide relief to people who are being priced out of their apartment or struggling to afford groceries for their family at the store. To my point, the author of this article shared information about a 40-year-old single mother named Catherine Charles who lives in Tampa, Florida. She said inflation slowdown hasn't made it easier to make ends meet. 
She also had to cut back on groceries, even though she said her 16-year-old son and 10-year-old daughter are at the age where they are eating everything in front of them. Well, this seems to align with what I picked up on when reviewing the CPI report this month. My heart goes out to Catherine Charles and all other Americans who may be struggling to survive during these times of high inflation. Inflation isn't just impacting younger Americans with children. It is also having an impact on those thinking about retirement. I read an article today on Yahoo Finance put out by Smart Asset and written by Brian J. O'Connor titled, Bad News, Americans are now more worried about high costs of living than retirement prep. According to the author, a recent survey of employers from the Employee Benefit Research Institute, EBRI, uncovered a major shift taking place among American companies and their workers. Instead of putting retirement readiness at the top of their list of financial concerns, they're increasingly becoming more worried about cost of living. So basically what we're hearing is people can't worry about their financial future during retirement because they are just trying to figure out how to survive today. This is not good information, especially if the results of this survey could potentially be representative of how the rest of the population in our country is thinking, which we don't know. I am not surprised by the findings of this survey. They seem to align with the earlier article that I shared with you. It also seems to align with a lot of the news in the other articles that I've been reporting about here on the channel recently. There appears to be a disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street and between the haves and the have-nots here in America. That divide seems to be expanding based on everything that I have read. Getting back to the article, I'm going to share with you the most interesting part. The author said employers who offer financial wellness programs to their workers say they're now seeing concerns around healthcare costs, budgeting, money management, and daily living expenses. Since EBRI started this employer survey six years ago, this is the first time these costs of living based problems have displaced preparing for retirement as the top concern for employees. Well, here are my thoughts. This is terrible to read about because many people who are retired or nearing retirement in America are facing a crisis. Many have little to no money saved, yet they are no longer able to work for a variety of reasons. The fact that people who are still working may not be making retirement a priority is very troubling to me. I've said this before on the channel. I am concerned about what life is going to be like for people who reach retirement age decades from now. I think it could be a lot worse than it is today. Many young people today are living paycheck to paycheck. They are living for today because there is no money left over each month to allocate toward retirement savings. The average Social Security benefit in 2023 is only $1,827. There are a lot of people who are struggling to survive in retirement with only Social Security income. I think we could possibly see a lot of problems in our society decades from now. Let me know what you think about all of this. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I read another interesting article today that seems to align with my thoughts regarding why the future could be potentially grim for some younger generations when they reach retirement age. I read an article on yahoo.com put out by Deseret News and written by Madison Selchu titled, The Reason Behind Why Americans Are Spending Their Money Rather Than Saving It. According to the author, despite the reported cooling of inflation and the older generation's emphasis in saving money to invest in the future, Americans are still spending their money rather than saving it. The author cites Rachel Wolf from the Wall Street Journal who said, people these days are prioritizing the experiences that make them happy now over perhaps long-term savings goals. Well, in my opinion, some of these people may live to regret this when they get older and are no longer able to work. Unless, of course, they plan to get a large inheritance from their parents or grandparents, which is the plan for some people that I've spoken with. The author of this article also referenced the New York Times that reported those in the 20s currently are struggling to save money due to student debt, inflation increasing the prices of food, and the fact that the market today is a different scene than the generations that came before them. 
Well, my heart goes out to those who are in this type of situation. I can understand life is expensive. Life can be difficult to navigate at times. For some, this struggle may go on for a while unless they can figure out how to live further beneath their means and increase their income. Some will be able to advance in their careers and bring in more income. Others may need to find a part-time job or start a small business to bring in additional income. The solution will vary considerably depending on the person. I just believe people should do whatever is possible to secure their financial future so that they can retire with financial security and dignity once they get too old to work. For those struggling with their personal finances, they may want to consider reading the Dave Ramsey Total Money Makeover book. I've included an Amazon affiliate link in the description below to all of Dave Ramsey's books, including the Total Money Makeover. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. I know some of you that watch this channel aren't Dave Ramsey fans, and you are entitled to your opinions. I personally think the Total Money Makeover book is a good read, and it may benefit some people who weren't fortunate enough to have parents to provide them with a financial education, or for people who weren't fortunate enough to live in a state that requires a financial literacy course for graduation. Sadly, not all states require a course like this. What do you think about all of the Americans who are spending their money instead of saving it? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind, nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video via social media or via email with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.